Oh, she strutted right here for five minutes or more. Yes. Here goes out. I don't know. I can just see his tail. Got him. Good morning y'all, hope everyone's having a great day. Today, as you can see from the title screen, we have the Ruger Blackhawk Elite Air Rifle Review. I'm gonna keep everything short and sweet. I know most of my reviews, I go into depth on everything I'm doing, but we're literally two hours away from a storm. And if I, you know, that's basically the only window I have to get everything done um, before our dove season starts, because once it starts, everything else is off the window and we're gonna be hunting every day so regardless today we're gonna be reviewing the Ruger Airhawk Elite I have about seven or eight different pellets what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tell you guys what they are and then we're gonna start sending rounds down range I'm gonna be using my halo CL 300 range finders got the target setting at 17 yards it's fine Wind's starting to pick up now so if I want to get this done we better start shooting so all I'm gonna do I'm gonna spin you guys around I'll tell you on the GoPro what, you know, what I'm shooting. I'll pop a picture up on the screen right next to the target and we'll get to shooting. So here we go. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. First up, we have the domed ultra magnum 10.5 grain by Crossman Premier. We're shooting five shots of each. So here we go. And we're coming in with the last shot for the Crossman Domed. Alright, I'm going to go down flip targets and we're just going to get into a steady roll pace, so stay tuned. Alright y'all, now we have the 10.5 grain Crossman Premier Piranhas. I'm going to shoot five of them. Let's see how they do. Here we go. All right, that was five of them, so we'll go down and just keep moving. All right, y'all, next up we have a Crossman Premier Hollow Point 7.9 grain. I'll put a picture up on your screen like I have been and sling five down range. All right, y'all, the target fell. So we're gonna go for that little black thing on the bottom with these last couple shots. All right, there's five of them. We're gonna switch the target again. Here we go. All right, y'all loaded in right now. We have the 7.4 Crossman Premier pointed, and we're gonna shoot five of them. Five. 
All right, that's five of them, and I can tell you right now, they're the best ones so far. On to the next one. Now up, we have the Daisy uh, 177 flat nose. I don't have a weight grain because I don't have it on the box, so I'll just pull a picture up on the screen so you guys can get an idea of what they are, if they shoot good or not. But We're going to go into more depth after this is all said and done. Um... I'll go into more depth on the rifle, my thoughts, and all that. So here we go. There's all of them, and <laughs> them was pretty much cut the whole circle out. All right, y'all, here we go. We have the Daisy point .177 pointed. Again, don't know the weight grain because unfortunately I don't have them on it, but I'd say it's on a lighter end spective. So here we go. All right, by far them right there was the worst pellets that we've shot, so. All right, y'all, we got Crossman Premier Destroyers. 7.4 grain. See what they do. All right, there's five of the destroyers. They didn't do that good, so we're going to move on to the last ones. All right, we have the Gamma Red Fires uh, loaded up. It should be a 7.9 grain. If it's not, I'm going to pop it up under the little icon of the pellet you guys are looking at right now. Um, yeah. If y'all don't see nothing, then I couldn't find it, but here we go. Okay, y'all, that's it. That's every single pellet. I'm going to line them up from what I thought was the best to the worst, and we're going to take a look at them on a the table. And then at the very end, I'll give you guys my final review on the Ruger Blackhawk Elite. So I'm sure y'all was <clears throat> wondering. I'm very happy with the purchase. So the best ones, in my opinion, was these Daisies. 349, I know where a bunch of them is. Look at that. Talk about hitting perfect. And then we move to the Red Fire by Gamo. Them shoot similar to the other ones. As you can see, they have ballistic tips. Then we move down the line, and these are all ordered from best to uh, worst. Them cross from Premier Pointed, 7.4 grains. Them shot with them about a dime size group. All them first threes are a dime size group. Then, or not a dime, but a quarter. 
Uh, cross from Premier Hollow Point, 7.9 grain. As you guys remember, I only shot that very first one, and then the rest I had to shoot at that little black thing, and they shot outstanding. The piranhas may have beat them, I can't remember, but regardless, the piranhas, 10.5 grain, shot outstanding in it. That's had shooting squirrels all day. And then the domed ultra magnums, which we had to order these pellets, I can't find them at any Walmart. Um, they did decent. Not the best. They only shoot out of my F4 really good. The Daisy .177, absolutely terrible. Completely, look at that group. That's as big as my hand. And then uh, Destroyers, which have that cool looking thing, but that don't mean they're gonna shoot good. Dead absolutely terrible. But make sure you guys stick around because what I'm about to tell you in this next video part is super, super important if you want to get accuracy like I have on every air gun I own. I have shot this gun a little bit more off camera and I can tell you, I'm it's like truly impressed. Yesterday I was shooting and touching the same exact hole as the rest. Friday, I'm going to be, I may film it, I'm going to end up sighting every all three of them dead on and then I get my 22s and all that sighted in because it'd be next week will be the last week of waiting and then after that we're going to be shooting squirrels and doves and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to get the big rifle sighted in and then all the air rifles ready. So, so as you all can see, this is what the gun look like now. Looks a little shiny whatnot, but when I got this rifle, I got it so cheap because wasn't in the best condition. Down here, your your uh, trigger guard, it was snapped. As you can see, all I did was just super glue it. Maybe you might be able to see it. I just put some super glue on it, put it back together, and it worked as new. You know, I need to sand it down a little bit more. I did sand it some because I had a lot of glue on it. You know, a little bit more sanding, you can never tell that there was even glued together. Basically, what well, does matter, when I got this gun, Basically, all I'm saying is it wasn't in the best condition. I spent two days trying to get it back to a good condition, a healthy position, and pretty much I'm there. I still need a little bit more work with it. So, I'll just go ahead and go into what I like and what I don't like about the gun. So, what I do like is it can be 50-50. So, your safety, as you guys can see, that little black thing right there, you pull that out. Boom. Now, we're on safety. Gun's not loaded, by the way, you see? Okay, and when you're off, you're just gonna push it forward and she's ready. That's pretty cool, you know, because when I'm up on a squirrel or whatever, I'm shooting a bird, whatever, when I'm on him, all I gotta do is just, just pick it up. And which, you know, other safeties are cool because they're down here usually. But I can just pick it up and just, boom, push it in, pow and let the old pellet eat. So I liked it. Now this is the original scope. Everybody's making fun of this scope. Oh, it's hard to see out of and blah, blah, blah. This is the original scope that this gun, you know, that came on this gun. And I think he said he's had this gun for like nine years. It, a long, long time. Again, it is a little bit hard to see out of, but I'm telling you what, it's held up. All these times this gun's been dropped um, and everything on concrete and everything else. And this scope is held perfect. I mean, it's a hell of a scope. I mean, like I said, the only thing is, it looks like it has dust in the inside or something. So if you get to a certain spot in the sunlight, it makes it very difficult to see. But for low light conditions, I can see perfect. So as you guys can see, she has a suppressor on it. Silencer, whatever you want to call them, datner. Just to make it a little quieter. Um, even with this one there, this gun's... It's not super loud, it ain't like a 22. It's still down there, but you can definitely hear the pop instead of, you know, like my Ruger Impact of 22 cal. It just, psh, psh, you know, this was like a poof. You know, a lot of air pushing out of it. But again, it's not gonna affect me squirrel hunting, I can guarantee it. You know, uh, I could probably get multiple shots at squirrels, especially if you get four or five in a tree. You know, I may limit out at one tree with it. But, yeah, I also I love the thumb hole stock. It's got a good grip on it. I'm wanting to say it has a two-stage trigger. I'm not going to say it does, so 
because I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done much, you know, background looking at the gun. Um, I think this one here is for looks. I don't, or maybe it helps with recoil. I'm not too sure, but I mean, with the air gun, there's not much recoil. The biggest recoil problems with scopes. Um, I spent right here 72 bucks on a scope for an air rifle. It turns right around and it wouldn't work because the scope kept jer you know jerking. So put it on a regular 22 rifle and no problem at all. Smacking bullseye center, cutting. I could sit there and just shoot a little orange dot, shoot the whole center. I love it. But all in all, I am happy with the Ruger Blackhawk Elite. And I'm wanting to say that I own the matching set now. I have the Ruger Impact and I'm not sure if there's another one. I know there's a pump, but I'm not going to count in. I'm only going to go for the brake barrels. I want all the matching Rugers. I want every single one of them. The whole match is set. I want to own every one of them. And hands down, Ruger has became my number one pellet gun. Back in the day, it used to be Benjamin. Now it's Ruger. I'm all about Ruger uh, pellet guns, man. I haven't had a bad one yet. They're all pinpoint accuracy. Okay, you guys see this circle, right? Pretty much about a dime size. I'm going to center my crosshair every single time. If people don't understand this, they think I'm shooting and moving my scope. No. I'm going to center my crosshair on these circles every single time on each different target. I am not one time going to move. I'm not moving my damn sight not one time. And I'm shooting all different pellets. And all I'm doing is aiming dead center of this, shooting every single time. My buddy was like, oh, I see you're trying to get the tightest group pellet and then sight the gun in for it. And that's exactly what it is. All you're trying to do is, uh, you know, no matter if you're shooting way down here, way up here, don't touch it. As long as you're hitting the paper, that's just all, that's all you need. That way you can just keep a track on where you're hitting. So what all you're going to do, you're going to shoot all your pellets without touching your crosshairs. You're just going to keep switching your papers with each type of pellet and just aiming in the center and shooting. As long as you're touching the paper, you're good. So once you do all that, you're going to take the tightest group pellet and whatever one type, you know, shot the tightest group, you're going to sight in for the center. And that's simple as that. A lot of people go to the store, they buy the very first pack of pellets they see, the gun's terrible. But I'm telling you, I was smart and I buy every, every different pellet I can find on the market right now as of Walmart and stuff, I buy. I don't care, just weight, different weight grain and all that, I buy it. Because I know that they all perform different out of all my air guns, and that's just my experience. All pellets perform different out of my air guns. For instance, a lot of people only shoot factory ammo, PBA pellets, because uh, that's just what the book says on gamma or whatever. Don't let that get to your head because you're going to shoot and you're going to realize, man, this thing's shooting all over the place. But then you go take a lead pellet. Boom, 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 and you're just stacking. This is just my, you know, all my honest opinion. I'm not saying go do this and do that, but if you want a really, really accurate gun, that's just what you can do. And there's other ways of going about it, but this is my number one way of doing it. And all my air guns are head shoot worthy of squirrels. Again, I'm only shooting 20 yards. I could probably boost it out to 30 if I wanted, but I like being, you know, up close and personal and them not knowing I'm even there. That right there is how you get your air guns to shoot damn good. You know, just go out, buy different weight grain pellets, same caliber, just different weight grains, different shapes, sizes, and just keep shooting them and shooting them and shooting them. And I'm telling you, eventually one of them little bad boys, it might even be the first pack you buy, is going to get down in there. Again, it can get expensive, but it's worth it in the end. So with that all being said, this is my honest review on the Ruger. Blackhawk Elite. I think there's a Blackhawk Elite 2, not 100% sure. I'm going to go on the web here in a little bit and look around for one. But love you all, and I'll see you guys on another episode of Huntfish Ohio Outdoors. I'm out.